example here. Um, Um, I'll I'll add a a post to the forum asking for anything that uh, anybody wants to take a look at in the in the Zoom session, so I can prepare a good example of that. Okay. So I think everyone should trickle in in a couple of minutes. If it's not uh, required Hi. that you show up at these Zoom sessions. Oh, I just heard somebody's voice there. Is that? Uh... Yes, it's me. Hi, Carl Marcos. I, you know you know you're recording this, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. going to record. Uh, I'm going to record all of the Zoom sessions and post them on the Sage. Uh, sorry, on oh, the okay. on the Moodle as well. So any of anybody who misses them, they'll they can watch if they like. Okay. So I started. Just, uh, I started recording at 10:30, um, even before some of you were here. Um, I I was here early and I I sent you a chat. I wasn't sure if you knew, but anyways, I did delete the, the linked accounts to the all receivables as it was in uh, as you were mentioned. That yeah. was not an issue. But when I go to the services, I just have one question here because they are creating services and the service number C one hundred three TV stands was linked to. Um, furniture accounts. Is that a mistake? Uh, let me just take a look at when I... when you get to the creating uh, services on your own. Okay, the yeah, create, creating the services. Let me take a look here. Uh, I'll look at the I book. have. A... Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Page twenty five. Twenty five. I was going full of windows. Uh, so you're creating the services on page twenty six. 25, the service stands. I have a, a new book. I might, might have a different numbers. Uh, yeah, and so there's a whole create. Uh, so you have uh, S101 and S102, right? Is that, are those the services you're talking about? No, but it's the, I like create services. It's the, actually it's the furniture thing. It's page 25. I'm concerned about these TV stands. I think it's the page before. The inventory, actually, sorry. Okay. Inventory. Yeah, inventory is on page 25. Yep. Services on page 26. Uh, sorry, which yeah, one? The, the, very, the, the C103 TV stands, when you look at it, it's linked to a furniture account. Uh, well, it is a furniture. TV stands are furniture, but let's just take a look here. Is, so, is it a furniture? I wasn't sure. So C103, I'll just quickly add. Why is it not? Why is it not? Uh, used as a as a furniture uh, let me just quickly add it TV yeah, just, um, yeah so just I'll just pop over the link point. here so they want you to link yeah. to 1520 yeah four zero two zero five zero two zero i wasn't sure it was furniture if it's a furniture wouldn't that be categorized as a is, is, uh, is it, is tv stands i think would is furniture it says it's furniture, but it says a C, which is belong to a other other uh, inventory. Just uh, look at the name there. It's kind of uh, it's actually confusing for me, so I wasn't sure if. Well, it's I mean, this is that, that would be up to uh, whoever's. Uh, so, so yeah, 1520 is supposed to be furniture. I, I mean, in my opinion, I would say a TV stand is definitely furniture. So I would use. Furniture. So wouldn't that be have a name a starting with a if it's a furniture? Uh, what does well? I mean, this, these are just the names that people give to these things. It's not. Uh, okay. It's not. There's no, there's no common practice as far as the actual number. Okay. But it was uh, confusing for me. I would categorize it as uh, other furniture, not not the furniture, like not the sofa and all these things. So for me, it was kind of confusing. Well, yeah, you, you notice that area carpets are C and floor yes. lamps are C and table yes. lamps are, so all of those things are C. So I think they could be linked to any of those accounts depending on what they actually are. It's not related, uh, what they're linked to is not related to their number. Yeah, because I originally put it to 1540 because I was categorized as, a, as other, but then it wouldn't match the, when you do linked accounts, it wouldn't match the number, so I had to put it back to the other ones. Yeah, I think I think those those C 
inventory numbers can be linked to any of the chart of account accounts. I think it's up yeah. in the air. Those are those are ambiguous. So I would say C103 would definitely be furniture. So it should be linked to furniture, regardless of what its number is. Okay. All right, just was confusing for me because when I, if I was doing it, if it starts with C, I would link it to the other. Yeah, so other for example, if I was building this chart of accounts, I would have, um, I would have a bunch of other 15, 20, yeah. I'd have 50, 20, 15, 30, 15, 40. I'd have 15, 50, and that would take care of the carpets. So okay. even though the carpets are C100, I would have them linked to 1550 inventory okay. carpets, right? Well, yeah, it was kind of confusing for me, but I just wasn't sure. But yeah. then I I would put it, I was putting it to 15404040, whatever, yeah. but I had to switch it back because of the linked accounts, the numbers when you do at the end the reconcile, the numbers wouldn't match oh, yeah. because of, you know, yeah, you have Whatever. to you have to do it the way the book says because if there is a historical balance for that item, it's got to match yeah. the inventory asset. Yeah, account. it didn't. Yeah, so yeah, you, it you didn't have to, match. So yeah, whatever. you have to do it that way. Yeah, which is something okay. I'll address. But yeah, um, in real life, you could do you could you know set up your item numbers to be more okay. descriptive than this if you like, right? So and if if this if this was a real furniture shop, I would have. Um, I would have L numbers for lamps. Yeah, a lot I would have, stuff. I would yeah. have C okay. numbers for carpets. I would have B numbers for beds. Yeah. I would have A numbers for appliances. You know, like so. It it's just however you wish to set up your your own chart of accounts. Yeah. Okay, because it just doesn't make didn't make sense to me, and I changed it, and it, I had to get it back to the same whatever it was in the book. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just gonna cancel this. Let me make this smaller so we can all see it a bit better here. Otherwise, it was all clear for me, so I don't have any issues with that. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, I was just going to quickly go over um, getting the subledgers to jive with the general ledger accounts. Um, basically, the things I mentioned in my Moodle here. Let me just bring it up. So uh, there is an issue here with counts not being in logical order. So hopefully we can experience that for Mary's benefit. Um, so there's a few accounts that were not listed in my copy of the book, uh, credit card, et cetera. They are in my notes, however. So they're already added there. I added them before. So I'll quickly show, show you those and delete those. Um, adding historical transactions, not so obvious. And if you make a mistake, you have to kind of fudge some stuff. So it's less than, uh, less than elegant. And then of course, getting the AP, AR, payroll liabilities and inventory assets to match the actual subledger balances. And, uh, Anything else that uh, anybody wants to talk about in our time together? So that's what I'll be looking at. Um, so I'm gonna pop up my Sage here. So uh, for example, this, this is an additional account that's created with a newer version of the software that's not listed in the book. When I go to delete it, it says it cannot be removed while it's being used as a linked account. So I have to remove the link as well, which they talk about in the book on page. Uh, 13, 14, and 15. Uh, sorry, 13 and 14. So just as, um, to, to uh, show you that, I'm just going to quickly find where it's linked, remove the link, and then I'll come back here, and then I'll be able to safely delete it. So I'll choose OK. Close that. I'll go to Setup Settings. Make sure you close other windows before you go there. Otherwise, you might not be able to change some of the settings. And 
I'm not sure where that would be linked. Let me just poke around here. Not there. Yep, there we have, have it, the online payment receivable. Oh, that's receivable. Yeah, that's it. So that's the asset account that I tried to delete. So to delete it, you just click on it and you press delete on your keyboard. And then make sure you tab out of the field. Sometimes it doesn't take unless you do that. I've seen folks try to delete it by clicking on the drop down arrow, which of course does not ever work. So I choose okay. I go back to my chart of accounts. Find that 1088, there it is there. And now I can safely remove it. So again, the book doesn't mention some of the accounts that I have listed here. So just make sure you remove all of the accounts that I have listed there. Uh, there's another issue with the linked accounts. So it's under, uh, they ask you a question at the end of the book about this, by the way. So that's where we get to choose where the retained earnings go when we advance the year. I think it's payroll linked. Yeah, notice that, uh, no, that's not it. It's the one on page. Flyers and purchases. There's basically one where there's a linked account down at the bottom that you can't see. So you have to make sure that you unlink that one as well. Oh yeah, here it is. So notice there's a scroll bar here. So in order to del delete 5466 from your chart of accounts, make sure you scroll down and remove that link. Otherwise you won't be able to delete that account. So it's a little bit uh, difficult to see. Um, under inventory, make sure you also remove that uh, item assembly cost. So in this data set that we're gonna create just for the very first lesson, topic one, uh, we'll never see this data set again, by the way, after topic one, we won't be using all of the accounts that they outline, outline on page 10. However, in the data set after this, we'll be using them all. So for example, uh, we delete foreign currency bank, We'll be using one of those um, in our future lessons for, for uh, level two. Um, we delete all of the uh, credit card receivable accounts and credit card payable. In uh, future lessons, we will be using those for credit cards. Also, we have uh, bad debts that we're deleting. Uh, allowance for doubtful accounts. I know that's not it. It's a bad debt expense. Yeah, 5620. We'll be using that one as well in level two. But again, this data set we won't see after today. So we can safely delete those accounts. And if you're wondering why the heck we have to delete all of these accounts, it's basically uh, the goal is to have a nice, lean, lightweight chart of accounts that's easily manageable. If you think about the, uh, the, the Buddhist tenet, uh, uh, possessions are a burden to the soul. Think about that in uh, bookkeeping terms a bloated 
chart of accounts is a burden to the soul. I don't know if that helps. All right, so that's uh, one of the gotchas is the linked accounts. Um, and if I go and I actually, I'm gonna go back to my chart of accounts and if I click on this little check mark, it actually shows me the accounts are in logical order. Um, but the reason that accounts would not be in logical order would be um, basically you have to have, anytime you have a G, G account, you have to have a T before it, sorry, um, an H before it and a T after it. So you always have to have that arrangement. Let me just uh, show you what that looks like. So if I go back to uh, type that is the uh, arrangement of the chart of accounts that we're used to, you see, I'll scroll up to the top here. You see for these assets, we have an H, right? And then we have a T. After this T, we always have another H. And between the T's and the H's, we always have at least one G. If we have an A, we also have to have an S to terminate those A's. So you can kind of think of this as initialize. So we can have a list of G's and then the total finish that, finishes that off, totals all those G's. And then again, same thing with the S. If we have some A's, we have that S to finish it all off. That's kind of how the, the structure works. And it's not uh, gonna be immediately obvious. You have to kind of stare at it for a few days. Um, a really way, good way to gain some understanding about what those account types do and how they work is to build your own chart of account accounts from scratch. But uh, that way kind of lies madness. You'll find you spend a lot of time doing something like that. It's always best to start with a stock chart of accounts that's already built for you by Sage and then remove the accounts and customize the accounts that you need to. So for example, they give us these placeholder accounts. This is fresh out of the box, right? So it gives you these pl uh, placeholder accounts that are already um, set up to be linked. Let me just quickly rename one of those. What's that one A, a supposed to be? Is that supposed to be inventory furniture or is it just plain old furniture? I can't remember. Anybody? just plain old furniture, right? So if I want to rename that, I could just double click on it or here's my little pen, pencil and change that to furniture. So that's one little hurdle is uh, deleting all of your linked accounts so that you can then safely remove the associated account from your chart of accounts. Now, um, Another uh, issue is when we have a balance in, for, for um, example, accounts receivable. So when this little history menu is available, so will an opening balance be available. So I'm gonna quickly add the opening balance there, which is, on page 18. So that's supposed to be 15, 4, 50. 15, 4, 2, 4, Now when I add an opening balance, they tell you this in the book. Um, so uh, on number four on page, uh, 15, it says in the select drop down list arrow to open the list, the following information may open. So basically what they're saying is they want you, instead of going save and close each time you add a balance, you just navigate to the next account you want to add the balance for. Let me just show you what happens if I hit save and close. If I hit save and close right now, It gives me this little dialogue 
that's kind of confusing has been added to retained earnings. So I have to go, okay. And then I have to open up another account to change the balance. So I'll go to 1520 furniture. And add that opening balance, which is 23850. So instead of doing that, I should just navigate by this little field here to add my next balance, which is 1530. Or I could just use my little arrow, whatever you like to do. And I'm going to say, always save changes so that I don't have to answer this again. And then I choose yes. That was already done for us in the level one data set. So that's why we didn't see this dialog when we've modified the chart of accounts in um, topic one. And then that pops over to the next item, which is appliance. Appliances, no, it's just plain old appliance and their opening balance. So that's the best way to op add opening balances. 21,000. Now, the deal here, just going to choose okay, I'll sort that out later. The deal here is that accounts receivable here has to match the balances of all of our customers. And 1520 Furniture has to add the balance of all of the items that are linked to 1520 Furniture. And same thing with uh, accounts payable. Uh, the balance of accounts payable has to match all of the balances of our vendors. And then in um, the payroll liabilities, all of those pay, pay, payroll liabilities, so any amounts that we haven't um, remitted, so any outstanding EI, CPP, and tax amounts have to match the amounts for the employees as well. So basically that's what the next uh, portion of the book covers, which is uh, starting on page 21 is getting our sub ledger to match our general ledger. And I'll quickly show you the little error that pops up so you can kind of get an understanding about what the heck I'm talking about. I'm just gonna close this chart of accounts. If I go to history here and I choose finish entering history, it'll give me a little error here that tells me what I just said. So checking customers. So some of your customer's information does not equal the current balance of account 1200 accounts receivable. Right, so I added a, ba a balance in AR. So I need all of my custer customers to match that. So if I had no balance in AR, then we don't have to worry about it. So you'll see in my um, in my uh, midterm, we're creating a company from scratch. They they haven't done any business at all yet. We're we're setting up the books before we actually sell anything. So there is no balance for AR or AP. So we don't have to worry about suppliers and customers matching those balances. We have no inventory, so we don't have to worry about those inventory accounts. All we have is a bank balance, which has no associated linked accounts that need balances. But for the purposes of the book, basically they're saying this, if you have been doing some business for a little while, you have to add that historical information so that uh, your balance sheet is in good shape and your income statement is in good shape. You'll be able to produce accurate financial statements once you've done that. You can actually work with the company data and all of your customers and sales and whatnot um, without finishing entering history. That's something you can wait till the end of the year, generally the end of the month, because you'll need to produce an income statement and a balance sheet at the end of the month. But um, you don't have to worry about scrambling to get that all completed before you start doing business. You can start selling and buying stuff. Uh, without finishing entering history. So that can be left available. You'll see I don't get you to finish entering history until the uh, final project of level two. And most people miss that particular point and they have to, have to mark that wrong. So I'm gonna quickly add um, a historic amount to, uh, we have suppliers on 21, but I'm just gonna jump up to uh, 23 because I already added the AR balance. I didn't add the uh, 
the AP balance. So I'm just going to quickly show you one um, customer historical transaction, and I'm going to make a, a mistake on purpose. So if you look at page 23, I'll just quickly bring it up in my notes as well. So if you're not, if you don't have a book, that's fine. So we have um, Sarah Hertig. I'll go, actually, I'll go ahead and add the first one, Jerry Davidson. He's on page uh, 22 in my book. I'm not sure if everybody else, everybody else's book is accurate or the page numbers my, uh, match mine, that is. But um, so he has a balance of 2,172.60. So I'm just going to make it. 2170 on purpose i'll make that that error and i'll show you how you have to actually fudge the thing to fix it and i'll do um i'll add sarah, sarah hertig's balance as well but instead of 3189 i'll say 3289 so we'll add too much so i'll do uh, one of each so we can see how to fix these things uh, and now, and now it doesn't it probably will give you a little bit of a stomach ache to do it this way it seems like it's not quite right but it's the only way to fix historical transactions um, if you've made an error other than restoring your company data. So some folks may want to create a backup before they start entering these historical invoices so that if they do make a mistake, they can go back to that backup and start over again. That's another way of fixing them. Um, but uh, of course, what you'd really want to do is just be very, very careful at this step because uh, it's very unforgiving adding those historical transactions. So let me just jump over to customers of sales and I'll click on customers. Uh, again, my favorite way to create a new customer is just to click right on the word customers and add customers. And this is, I'll add the first guy here on page 22. So this is uh, Davidson Jerry. He's been with us since the very beginning. You can just type in. Uh, now, one of you, when you submitted your midterm, all of your months and days were transposed. So instead of adding transactions for January 3rd, you're adding transactions for March 1st. To avoid that happening in Sage 50, it's a little trickier in, Quick, trickier in QuickBooks, but in Sage 50, always use a three letter abbreviation. And this is actually the most efficient way to enter a date. Just Jan space one. Then you don't have to worry about transposing your month and date for goodness sakes. I had to mark all those wrong because it made me feel really bad. Um, so three-letter abbreviation, and then the day. We don't need to specify the fiscal year. That's already implied when you're working in that year. All right, and I'm going to pop over to um, statistics. Oh, no, sorry. I can't see it here. Statistics are, are for credit limits, historical transactions. And then I save. And we have... So these historical transactions are all of only the historical transactions that are outstanding. We don't every we don't add every single purchase and payment that Jerry made in the first two months of doing business with this company. Those have already been uh, taken dealt with and uh, cleared, and we can look them up in the old accounting system, whatever that is, an Excel spreadsheet or a, a bundle of um, receipts and whatnot in your glove box for your car, if that was your old accounting system. We're only adding the invoices that haven't been paid. So generally you don't need to add payments. So we're gonna be, uh, again, I'm gonna make a mistake on purpose on this one. So I'm gonna add 2,170.60. So this is invoice number 102, that's our invoice number. And it happened on January 15. Uh, by the way, when we set up this company, we said no transactions before um, March 1st of 2017. So these are historical transactions. So if I go and try to add a transaction after, since these are historical, see what happens here. 
So I'll make two errors. 2170. So I'm making an error on purpose here. Decimal six. So when I hit record, the date must be in that historical period is what it's saying. So, oh, that's right. This is a historical invoice. So this is not something that happened presently. This happened back in January again. January 15. Again, three letter abbreviation, very efficient. We don't have to worry about mixing up our months and days. And I'm as guilty of that as the next person. I always get those things mixed up. Give me two choices. I'll make the wrong choice. <clears throat> so now I can record. So again, I made a mistake there. And when I hit record, it's not immediately obvious that anything happened. Right? It just clears the form. I don't see a balance owing here. So it's again, it's a little tricky. It's not, it's not so elegant. But once I close this thing, I see there's my balance. It's incorrect. So what I have to do is add another invoice for $2 to make up the difference, right? So I'll say, I'll use the same invoice number, but I'll add a A for adjustment at the end. Or you could even say ADJ. And then I'll add the same date, which was Jan 15. Again, always a three letter abbreviation. So you can avoid any dyslexia issues that you may have like myself. And I hit tab, I choose record, and I close, and now we're in good shape. So I'm done with uh, Jerry Davidson. I'll go ahead and create a new customer. And this one, again, I'll make this, uh, I'll give her a balance that's too large. So I'll make a mistake. Marcus, uh huh. I uh, I tr uh, is the uh, error about um, you know the date between you can't go before uh, two thousand and seven March two thousand seven. How do you fix that? Uh, March two thousand seven. No, it's not March two thousand seven. It's March March two thousand seventeen. Um, so basically, it, they talk about this in the book on page. Do you have a book, Colin? Yes, I do. Oh, good. Uh, they talk about this. Um, on page six of the book, right? So basically what's happening with this company is that we've been doing business with another accounting system for January and February of 2017, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, when we created the company, we said, uh, this is number seven on page six, the earliest transaction is March 1st, right? Mm -hmm. So what that means is we won't be able to enter any transactions before March 1st because they all, that was in the, in the historical period that we are using a different accounting system. So if we want to add any transactions before March 1st, we have to add them to the old accounting system. If we want to look oh, up any, if we want to look up any transactions or produce any reports before March 1st of 2017, we have to look, do that in the old accounting system. So right now we're in the historical period and we're adding anything outstanding that we're still owed from the old accounting system, right? So we can only add those transactions in January and February of 2017. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, but I still got, um, maybe I set up it wrong. I still got the uh, historical invoices date um, um, oh. March, March 1st, 2007. Yeah, so you get you entered the wrong year. The um, the, the fiscal year start should have been um, January 1st, 2017. The earliest transaction should have been March 1st, 2017. So if you want to fix that, if you've yeah. entered the wrong year, let me just quickly show you where you can do that. Okay. Uh, make sure you close other windows. So if I'm at my home screen, I close other windows mm -hmm. and I go to setup, settings, company, information, and here's where that information is entered. Did you find that, Colin? That's one second. Oh, information, okay. Setup, settings, company information. So basically everything that we entered in those uh, uh, pages, I think it's uh, four to six, 
None of that stuff is set in stone. We can change any of it through. So you notice all, all I added was uh, okay. all I added was woodsman, and I picked up the correct um, uh, province. So I had the proper taxes created for me when I set up the set up the company. I left all of this other stuff blank because I knew I could always just come back here later and fix add it all later. But so if you had uh, the wrong dates, do you have two thousand seven here? Uh, yes, I, yes, I corrected it. Yeah, so just change that to two thousand seventeen, and then you should yes. be good to go. Yeah. Okay, I just didn't check about this the setup part. I, yeah, it's reported to two thousand and seven, so I, I two thousand seven. Yeah, now it's two thousand and seventeen. So, <laughs> so I choose okay I'm, here. I, yeah, I'm okay that. <laughs> okay, good. Um, now let me just quickly make that mistake that I was telling you about. So I'm going to make the balance too great for the next customer, so I can show you how to again fudge this so that we can fix it. This is on page twenty three. Number five, also in my notes, for those of you who don't uh, feel you need a book. The book is great, by the way, but um, this course isn't really required. I, I try to duplicate everything in the notes. Um, so again, I'll go back to customer sales. If I click on my add customer, again, my favorite way of adding the customer. We look at all of the ways back in level one and I go to this story and this is uh hurtig sarah save now voices this is uh 114 feb 28 so again it has to be before march 1st right and the amount, again, I'm gonna make it too much. So I'll say uh, three, two, eight, nine, ninety-five. And the book, it says three, one, eight, nine, ninety-five. So I choose record, I close, and I realize that it's too much. So basically to fudge this, to fix this, I have to enter a payment for $100. So I go to payments. Call it, say 114A, this is just an adjustment. The date, I'll use the same date as the invoice, which is Feb 28, I'll say a hundred bucks. I think I have a January 28. Yeah, you're right. Jan 20. Did I say Feb on the previous one as well? Jan 20. The first one you put February, so I'm not sure if that's going to work. Yeah. So if you're worried about dates in these historical trans transactions, which uh, may come up in an audit, you would go back and make another invoice, right? Um, uh, sorry, you'd make a payment. And I would call this uh, A... I'll call it AA104, just in case I can't have the same number. A114, that is. Sorry, what's that, Mary? Or she's one? Well, I think you're talking about to somebody else. Uh, so this is the, again, I'll make it the date of the error. So that's uh, Feb 28th, and then I'll pay it off, record, right? And then close, and then make a new invoice. So this is, uh, I'll call it uh, AAA 104, or sorry, 114. ADJ three, you could just number your adjustments, something like that, whatever you want to put in. You could actually put in anything in that invoice number that you like. I guess say tomato. It's not in reference to anything else, just you want to make it mean something to you. So tomato wouldn't be a good one thing, good thing, so it probably wouldn't mean anything to you. But if you want, if your job is to frustrate uh, any potential auditors, you can use invoices numbers like tomato, or if you're hungry, 
So I'm gonna put in uh, the correct date finally, Jan 28. The 28 threw me. Anytime I see 28, I just associate it with February for some reason. And the, I'll put in the correct amount now, 3189.95. So that was actually a happy accident that I made that third error. We got to see a little bit of extra um, fudging of the historical invoices screen. And I'll choose record. And we should say a balance of 3189 now after all of that. Um, and you don't have to worry too much about any of that. Um, if you want to see, they actually show you where those, uh, those amounts show up and it's the, uh, the customer aged summary or detail. So I'm just gonna close this and I'll go to my uh, reports and customers of sale. And I'll say customer aged. I'll look at summary. And as that, that'll work. That's past the date that I entered those transactions. Or past the date that I added to those transactions, I should say. There's the, the, uh, the balances there. Now notice you can drill down on that. So if I double click on it we see the two invoices there. If you double click on that invoice, there is no data to report. So there's no way you can get back to the original transaction to uh, adjust it. So you need to adjust it in the way that I showed, showed you. Uh, with other invoices, of course, we could just drill down and we'll actually see that invoice as we saw in level one. But these historical entries, again, we have to do it in that manner. Uh, we have to take care of it in that manner, I should say. Uh, let me just find something else I wanted to talk about here. Uh, pipe up if you have any questions along the way, by the way. Um, oh yeah, my little, that's what I'm trying to do. I think uh, we're good. I think we covered everything I wanted to. Um, Mary had a little issue with her not in logical order issue. Um, now I've seen this a fair amount and it generally tends to be the same thing. So let me just see if I can duplicate that error. Um, and let me just actually see if Mary has indeed emailed me that. Uh, I asked her for the cab. Uh, by the way, if you if you have uh, issues with your accounts not being in logical order and you can't figure out what the heck it was that you did or how to fix it, um, by all means, just uh, email me your cab file, and I'll uh, I'll fix it for you and, and I'll uh, let you know um, what the issue was. Let me just get rid of this. You don't need to see that anymore, and. So I'm gonna go back to my company, chart of accounts, and I'm gonna make a mistake on purpose. So um, this is something I frequently see done. So we have a couple of A accounts, right? And mm -hmm. we talked about this briefly at, in level one. Those A's always need to be followed by an S eventually, right? These are basically um, sub accounts and they'd be they need to be subtotaled. You can think of it that way. So maybe I accidentally call one of these a G. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna modify that and make it a G for group account, which needs to be subtotaled with a two, a T that is. So now if I click on my little check mark, it tells me my accounts are not in logical order. And it says, kind of a cryptic uh, reason here, there is a missing subgroup total account. So by reading this error, it seems like uh, somebody who's not really too sure about what's going on, they would add another account and make it a subtotal. That would fix the error, but then it would make this not work alongside its associated asset, right? So it's just because it's a G 
not an A. And you can tell by looking at the, uh, if you just quickly study your chart of account in that situation, you go, oh, okay, well, that's supposed to go along with that. That needs to be the same account type as that. And that's what my error is. And that's the most common error I've seen. So if I double click on it and just change it back to an A, that'll just fix it, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, um, another one, people accidentally will delete the uh, heading. So let's see if we can accidentally delete that. I'll just, uh, no, it doesn't look like we can delete it. Oh, yeah, here we go. We can't delete it, yeah. That's a common one I see all the time as well. That's a little bit uh, trickier to identify and figure out what you have to do because now you have to come up with your own name for that category, right? But luckily, the, the uh, system actually created this chart of accounts for us and it says total capital assets, right? So if we just use capital assets, then we're in good shape. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose new create, control N, and I'll say capital assets. So again, you have to kind of look at the bottom of the section of accounts for indication what to use for your, uh, your heading name. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, clap hands. I'll take that as a yes. All right, is there anything else that uh, was confusing or confounding? Any queries, cackles, catenations? Everything else is fairly clear. Uh, everyone finding their way around the Moodle for level two fairly well? I'll take that as a yes. Um, let's see what our next topic is here. We've got another 17 minutes here. Um, before I let you fly off on your own, I'll close my chart of accounts and go back to my Moodle. So we're still in day one here. Uh, everything else I think is fairly clear. We already looked at uh, restoring backups in level one, but I have you uh, I have another video about how to do that again. Um, and I think I, I talk exactly about what the heck is going on in these situations. But uh, um, if you remember back in level one, we um, any of our sales, our cash or check sales, as opposed to pay later sales, they went into 1020, which was our cash for deposit or something like that. So basically in this uh, example, we're taking all of the money out of that cash for deposit account and then putting it into an actual bank account. They have different account uh, numbers in this example, but uh, the, the situation is the same. Uh, and then bank reconciliation, I think everyone knows what a bank reconciliation is, but um, the one thing about the bank reconciliation is the only opportunity to check our work out, uh, against an outside source, right? So you can, uh, you can reconcile as frequently as you like. Um, because we can always look at our online statements um, and they'll, they'll uh, update immediately in a lot of situations. So I had one student that her whole job, that's all she did eight hours a day was uh, reconcile her bank accounts or her company's bank accounts. Um, and credit cards. So you will use those accounts that we deleted. Brad, this is a brand new data set, right? Uh, oh, do I provide you with a copy of the data set? Yes, it was there, I think, up higher. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, I've been up in the, the main part, right? Yeah, there we are. Yeah, so it's not in the actual lessons, but that's that's what we'll be using. So again, this one we create in topic one, we'll never see again. So feel free to mess it up, by the way. Create a different AR balance, different AAP balance. 
different uh, um, inventory balance and then go ahead and add the items or people you need to make that balance work. And they kind of have a better idea of how that all comes together. That took me a while to understand, by the way. I probably taught Sage 50 for five years before I knew exactly what was going on with the, the APAR, or sorry, um, general subledger uh, things having to jive. Uh, we don't have that in other accounting systems. When you add a balance to a subledger, the general ledger automatically connects and updates, just synchronizes. But uh, for some reason, they're 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 separate, two separate entity, entities in uh, in Sage. They you have to we have to manually make them jive. So, any uh, questions at all? Any any concerns? We all feel pretty good. Uh, I just have one regarding. Uh, let's see. Um, what what uh, like the midterms and uh, quizzes and things like that, right? What are those schedule for those ones? Um, uh, it's best for you uh, as far as your flow of learning to do your quizzes immediately after the topics, but okay. uh, but they're not due until um, the class. Uh, sorry, the week following the last class. Okay. So you don't need them done until um, uh, basically. What is it? Three weeks, three weeks today. Okay. Or four weeks, whatever it is. My arithmetic's terrible. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they have questions that are pertinent to the topic. So they're kind of a, a, a good uh, source of reinforcement more than anything else. But they, yeah, they don't need to be completed until the week following the last class. Same thing with the midterm. It would be better if you, uh, and I'll make that available um, after today. Okay. It would be better if you completed the midterm um, on day two, but you don't need to. Just I just need it completed before the week following the last class. Same thing with the with the final as well. Um, and then all of the quizzes make up uh, twenty percent of your mark. Um, all of them combined, and then midterm is forty, and final is forty. Okay. Okay. Um, well, and one fine. other thing is if you could check these boxes after, okay. wa after watching the videos. And then if you have any questions, I'll know what you've looked at and what you've done. And I don't have to um, ask you in, your, in, the, uh, in the actual conversation that we're having. I'll say, okay, I see that you've watched this video and then I might refer to it. I'll say, oh, if you remember uh, at minute uh, two and second three, we, we talked about blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay. And so uh, basically, yeah. the um, the quizzes and and the midterm and finals is at our own pace, or do you set a particular? The, yeah, your own pace. Yeah. So as long as you complete okay. them by the uh, by the uh, week following the last class. So yeah. Okay. That's piggly, right. piggly. No, I just thought that you know, we yeah. have to do it all at once at one time. You know, with the whole group. No, no, you don't. Yeah, you can do them at your leisure. You can do them on the bus. Um, the, by the way, let, okay. me quick, let me just quickly show you. Uh, oh, I don't have my phone handy, but if you download the Moodle app, and that's part of the reason why I use Moodle instead of um, Brightspace, mm -hmm. it has a, a, a great app you can install on Android and iPhone, okay. and it makes uh, doing things like quizzes, um, chatting, um, adding mm -hmm. points to the forum, as well as watching videos and everything, very, very easy that you can do anywhere at your leisure, right? So while you're in your bank lineup, you can you can finish a quiz off, or if you take public transit, you can probably uh, finish a whole whole topic on on right. the Moodle and stuff right it's a um, it works very well if you just uh, visit the website uh, moodle motorama.net slash moodle um, it's mm -hmm. a responsive uh, web application but the actual standalone um, app that you install on your device is actually very very solid and, and works great so okay yeah so go ahead and uh, complete your uh, whatever you like to complete uh, following this class during the week. So basically okay. higgledy piggledy, watch the videos at your leisure, watch them several okay. times if you want to. And then just make sure you check off these little boxes. Your mark's not dependent on these boxes being checked, but I'll know no. where, where you are in the course if you check the boxes, it gives me a better idea. Okay. Okay, because I may have time for this week, but I mean, I've get as much done as I can. And then maybe next week I might be busy. So if, if there's the flexibility of, you know, 
Yeah, uh, yeah, and the, uh, the this uh, Zoom session is not mandatory. There's no marks. You don't you okay. don't get marks for uh, attending, or you don't lose marks if you don't attend. So don't feel uh, compelled to show up if you can't. Um, okay. Yeah, so everything's at your own pace, your own leisure. And I'm okay. um, I'm teaching a, an actual classroom class during the day, and I always have my Moodle uh, running. So and I generally check the forum every day as well. So okay. anything that you add to the the chat here. Okay. Um, I generally respond to and, and these get uh, emailed to me as well. So I can, I can okay. see, see when you've uh, chatted, even if I'm not in the Moodle. Okay. That's great. And as far as um, uh, following, like going through the exercise, right? Go mm -hmm. with your notes. Yeah. And not with the book or. Yeah. These, uh, these notes are basically the data from the book. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're just basically a, um, summarized and truncated. So it's kind oh, of a, okay. a strum, streamlined version of all of the data. Oh, okay. okay. So if you notice that there's stuffing in the notes that's not in the book or vice versa, um, yeah, feel free to ask about it. And, and sometimes there's a okay. reason for that. Sometimes it's just because uh, I've forgotten or made a mistake, so. Okay, great, thank you. You betcha. Just wondering, when do we get the marks for the first one? Um, I've still got a couple. I'm waiting for a couple people to hand in their, uh, their work. Um, I see that you've handed everything in, so you should get your marks uh, before the end of today. I just have a couple more to mark. Okay. So they, I'll, I'll be posting them to the to the Langara website. I'm not sure how quickly that trickles down to you, but I think it's fairly immediate. So you should see your marks fairly quickly. Okay. I hope I passed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't, I don't I'm sure you did very well. I, I, I haven't had anyone uh, fail yet, but sometimes people get less than A+. plus. Sorry, what, what are these marks for? Uh, like, the marks uh, for, uh, for, for level one, the, uh, for the folks who took Oh, level, level one. one, okay. Yeah. No, I thought somebody's already done the midterm and everything. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I, um, I generally mark the midterms within the week following when it's due. Okay. So I usually, okay. if, if, if you look on the, uh, let me just actually quickly show you. Um, I'll, I'll go back to Sage 2 here and I'll show you what that looks like. So, Sage 1 Saturday. Where's my midterm? There we go. So if I, there's the assignment. You can tell it's got a little hand on it. Okay. So I can, um, you can uh, hand in your assignment by. You'll you'll have a submission button. I'm a instructor, so I don't have a submission button. But I see all my, okay. all of your, I see all of your submissions here. Okay. And if you're wondering about how well you did on your midterm, there'll be a little. Let me just make this wider. There'll be a little comment down here where I tell you where you went wrong and what uh, what you ended up getting on the midterm. Okay. So it's, so yeah yeah you'll see that uh, once I get to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. You bet. Oh, um, sorry. Excuse me, but I don't see my any comments for my midterm. Where can I see that? Uh, I think I added some to you. If you, you should see if you scroll way over, you should see comments one. Oh, okay, I see now. You see and that? Also, I have a question. Yes, do you find, do you find it? Yep. Yep. Okay. And also, um, are you going to upload this recording to the model? Uh, the this the recording of the Zoom session? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be uploading that today. Okay, great. Thank you. You betcha. Excuse me, Marcy. I can't see my comments. I, I just see it's not graded and the comments is zero. Let's see what you have. Yeah, so I haven't had, I haven't uh, put comments on yours quite yet. Let me just check yours. So you see I've got to some of them, but page two I still haven't got to Janka or you yet. So you can check back uh, by the end of today, you'll have a comment there for your midterm as well as your final. 
And you should have okay, a final, final mark via Langara as well. OK, thank you. You bet. All righty, well, I'm going to take that as uh, everyone's fairly feeling pretty good about everything. Um, again, if you're not, um, add questions to the forum, chat me, chat with me within the Moodle, send me an email, whatever you like to do. You can uh, write a letter on a piece of paper and tie it to a rock and throw it through my window, whatever you like to do. Oh, I have a question about uh, like this topics on, on day uh, day one. Okay, uh, but that's nothing for day two and day three. Uh, yeah, they'll come up. Uh, I'll, I'll be making those available. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so I, I basically just give you a day at a time, but I'll make them available oh, no, after, that's fine. Okay. after each topic. So, I just thought I was missing something. Yeah, so I'll make the first topic available. Oh, are we in stage? Oh, that's a different stage two. Uh, make the first topic available before the first class. So I'll make the second okay. topic, topic of it, or sorry. Um, topic one and topic two are the are day one. All oh, right, so today, okay. Yeah, so they'll make the second day available after the first day, so you'll be able to oh, okay. uh, read ahead and, and check stuff out. And then, if there's any questions for the Zoom session, uh, again, make sure you add. Uh, I'll have a little. Where's my stage two set? There it is. Uh, again, I usually post before Saturday. Okay. In the forum. I'll basically have a little call for the Zoom session. I'll say, hey, if you have, have anything you want to cover, okay. this is what I, yeah. I plan on covering based on some of the questions I've received over the week or whatever, or my own feelings. And then uh, and we can we can talk about that in the Zoom session. OK, sounds great. Right on. All right, well, you guys run off and do your quizzes and watch the videos and have a Saturday. And we'll. Uh, See you at 11 a.m. next Saturday. Um, by the way, if uh, if 11 is difficult for you and you would all like to move the session to another time, by all means, pipe up in the in the forum. Uh, otherwise, I'll assume everyone's good for 11 on Saturday. Um, if you if you find you want a little bit longer of a Zoom session, mention stuff like that as well. Usually, a, a, an hour takes care of everything. Um, I'm planning on getting started a little bit earlier each day, by the way. So I'm usually around at 1030. So if there's anything you want to talk about outside of the actual group Zoom, um, maybe just pop in a little bit early. I'll try to be here around 1030. And basically, I'll just be getting my uh, Sage 50 set up and, and looking at any little details that I think are uh, something that we should uh, revisit or, or whatnot. Uh, this is my first online class. So I'm just curious, when they list the time, uh, Saturday 9 to 4, um, that's flexible, right? It's not like we have to be here. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's basically stuff may happen within those hours. You can kind of think of it that way. But uh, yeah, okay. you're, you're free to take care of anything, any of the resources, whenever right. you like. Okay, great, great. Yeah, Thanks. so you can, you can spend the six and a half hours on a Saturday and do everything, or you can take 10 minutes a day and do everything. It's uh, either way is fine with me. Okay, thanks for clarifying. You bet. All right, see you all later. Take it easy. Okay, thanks a lot. Take care. You bet.